Thank you for joining us in our very last in the city of the season. We've been through some testing time since opening the campaign on the 8th of August against Blackburn, but here we are ending the season in blue and hopefully with one final push on Saturday against Forest, we can still get that top 10 finish. Now coming up later on in the show, trust me when I tell you this is something you're not going to want to miss. It is hilarious, so stay tuned and we'll also be announcing the winner of last week's Twitter giveaway competition. But first up, your support has been invaluable throughout the season and last Saturday our festival of sport was our way as a club of saying thank you to you guys for your continued support so let's take a look at how the afternoon went as a token of our gratitude for your continued support of both the football club and the foundation Cardiff City held their first festival of sport with free sports fun and fairground rides last Saturday Members of both the first team and the development team joined in on the action as an extra added bonus for the fans. We have Blue Bid Sports Day. Uh, you've been doing a bit of boxing, haven't you? Yeah, I've been uh, hit quite hard by several uh, under 10s, but um, no, it's great. Obviously, I think they realise how much is involved in boxing, fitness wise. It's not just about aggression and things, it's about fitness, it's about sort of working together. And um, no, I think they've enjoyed it, so hopefully, we'll get a lot more people coming out to. Uh, to join in when it's when it's done at the um, at the house of sport. Trying to handle a bit of cricket today. How's it going? Yeah, it's not too bad. I uh, did get beaten by a kid a minute ago, so <laughs> yeah, it's been a mix there. Uh, you got a history with with cricket growing up? Yeah, I used to um, I used to play a bit back home. Um, I played for Norfolk like, junior age groups. Yeah, and I used to really enjoy cricket, but in the end, sort of football took over. And... Well, I was I was supposed to be in the cricket. I got 135 out. I don't really want to mention it from my <laughs> local side, but I wasn't involved, so um, I'm a bit disappointed by that. But. I think I might show a couple of lads up. We've just had Alex Ravel gloat in as well. Apparently he made a 135 not out at one stage for his local team. We reckon we could set up a charity game, Addy Amy against Ravel? Yeah, to be fair, I think um, a few of the boys have played a bit of cricket. I think Wits possibly has in the past. I know KG loves it. Yeah. He was telling me how much better South Africa are than England. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be up for that, definitely. Pre-game event ahead of our home fixture against Blackpool was a massive success, with many youngsters from our local primary schools attending their first ever City game. As you can see how many people come out today. It's you know it's great that the club put things on like that for people to come and and see the different sports are available and you know it's, it's what the community is about. It's a community club and it's what it's what you know we bring here and I think that everyone everyone's enjoying the day and. Hopefully it brings more people to, to, to Cardiff. You know, sport's great for kids growing up because I think it obviously it gets them into exercise firstly, so it sort of keeps them fitter in the long run. And also it's a good, good way for kids to socialise and, you know, meet new friends. Having days like today introduces them to Cardiff City and hopefully, you know, they'll be the next generation of supporters. And now for the last community roundup of the 2014-15 season. Staying with the community, David Palmer from the PFA paid a visit to the House of Sport. Here's what he had to say. Cardiff City are one of the best clubs on player engagement up and down the country. Obviously one of the few clubs to do a foundation day and raise funds for, for the community foundation. The club are the biggest uh, organisation, you know, professional business organisation in the city. And it's important that they've got a social responsibility to its local community. And the players are pivotal towards that. So, and Cardiff City, have, for the last five, six years, have been right at the top of player figures, statistics in terms of the number of player appearances and I think the lads have got a really good understanding of what the Community Foundation is all about and the football club and the importance of touch of those visits. And continuing on from our Festival of Sport, four lucky young competitors and their parents competed in How's Your Shot on the pitch at half time last Saturday and won themselves a football signed by the first team. After 50 years of hard work and dedication, Phil Williams is retiring from his role as Cardiff City's groundsman this summer. We would like to wish Phil the very best and would like to thank him for ensuring that Cardiff City pitches were second to none. Before they left the Cardiff City field for the last time this season, club captain David Marshall led his teammates around the field in acknowledgement of the sport given over the course of the campaign. On Tuesday evening, the players continued their thanks as they met their shirt sponsors for this season at this year's annual kit sponsors evening which took place at the Cardiff City Stadium. Our women's team top goalscorer Lisa Bird was presented with a trophy by Steve Borley before Saturday's game after she was voted the winner of our Club Goal of the Month competition for January. And continuing with her goalscoring ways, Lisa Bird secured a 2-0 win for our women's side on Sunday afternoon as they beat Wrexham Ladies in the last game of the 2014-15 season. 
Our under-18 futsal side both finished the season in style as they left the International Futsal Arena with two victories on Wednesday afternoon and finished top of the League 1 and 2 in the South Midlands Division. Here they are completing their lap of honour around the pitch on Saturday afternoon. The season also came to a close for the development side on Monday evening where they drew 0-0 with Ipswich Town and finished third in the Professional Development League 2 South Division. And the academy will close this season taking on South Wales rival Swansea City in the final of the FAW Youth Cup at Cardiff City Stadium. Highlights and reaction of the game will be available on Player and YouTube by Friday evening. And following on from last week's competition where we asked you in which year did Celtic knock Barcelona after the UEFA Cup and hold them to a 0-0 draw at the Camp Nou? The answer of course is 2004 and here's Marcy announcing the winner. Uh, the winner of last week's competition is Tyler Morrissey, so congratulations, you've won a pair of my signed gloves. Locked together on 59 points in the middle of the championship pack, Saturday's fixture gives both sides a real opportunity to finish the season on a positive and as high as 10th in the Skybet Championship. While City have just one away defeat on their record in their last eight matches away from Cardiff City Stadium, Forest are looking for their first win in seven and have dropped three consecutive games at the City ground to Wolves, Huddersfield and Watford. It may seem a distant memory now, but Forest were actually the early season pace setters in the Championship and still possess the third best record for time spent atop the league table this year, after potential champions Bournemouth and Derby County. Despite changing managers from Stuart Pearce to Dougie Friedman earlier in the season, player usage has been relatively low, with just 33 players used in their 45 championship fixtures thus far. They're middle of the pack in terms of that ranking, and five fewer than ourselves. Of those players used, it's summer recruit Mikel Antonio who leads the way in the majority of categories. He's appeared in every one of Forrest's 48 matches so far this season, and has appeared in 95.8% of the club's possible championship minutes. He's just one short of injured striker Britt Asombolonga's tally of 14 goals to tie the club's championship scoring chart, whilst his 15 league assists is three times more than anyone else at the club. All in all, those statistics combined mean that Antonio has been involved in 40% of Forrest's championship goals this season, a scoring contribution rate far above anybody else in the division. It's not as if Forrest have been short of goals either. They've scored 70 in the championship this term, and only five clubs have scored more. And Forrest are still scoring at better than a goal a game, due in this current extended winless run. Goals against have been a particular weakness though for Forrest. They've conceded an average of 1.5 per game over the course of the season, 67 in total. This defensive decline has coincided with their drop down the table. They began the season with just three goals conceded from their opening seven games, and actually put together a run of six clean sheets from nine matches due in August and September. So now it's time for the very last theme of the season and as promised earlier, it's a good one. So let's take a look at this year's auditions for City's Got Talent. I'm going to do the sub story. Oh, okay. Can you, some, can you edit some music in? I'm Kadeem Harris. I'm 21 years old and I'm going to do my best Steve Irwin impression. Sean Morrison, 24 from Plymouth. Um, and it's just my dream to sing. I've always wanted to be in a boy band, but no one ever wants to sing with me. Um, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of dancing. I was working on a building site though, and, and um, Sadly, broke my leg, and that led to my career going, dancing career, in fact, going downhill. Um, I play football, well, I fell into football, um, but really I think my passion lies with the West End, um, singing and dancing. Well, I'm just starting to get back into it now, and I'm really, I really want to win this for, me, for myself more than anyone, to be honest. A turtle died recently. Trevor, <laughs> Trevor the turtle. It's devastating, but I'm going to do my rend rendition of uh, Backstreet Boys quick playing games in my heart. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. 
That's, this is the instrumental. What you've got here is you've got your python. Thing is, you can't get too close to these because you've got serious venom going right in your eyes. Sometimes I wish I could turn back time. We're playing games with my, quit playing games with my. I should have known from the start, keep playing games with my, keep playing games with my. <sighs> 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 you know.